Hello, fourth grade. Are you ready for some March Madness? Remember, today will be super, super fun as long as you follow expectations and listen to the instructions very carefully. Just like there are rules in actual basketball, there are rules in our tournament too. If we get a foul in basketball, we can't play anymore. If we don't follow the rules in our activity today, we can't play it anymore. And that is going to be really, really sad. So let's learn the rules. Our tournament today is all about inferencing. I know this is going to be a reminder for y'all, but I want you to remember all of the elements we learned to help us make an inference. We will be using all of those elements as we make our inferences today. For this activity, you will have five yellow envelopes, and in those envelopes, there are smaller white envelopes with questions to answer on your answer document. It is very important to open them in order because each one has a clue to the next envelope. Don't freak out. It's a lot more fun than it sounds. Let's work through the first big envelope together. I need you to fill out your answer sheet as I explain it on the video so you know how to fill out the answer sheet for the rest of the questions. So here's our first big envelope. In this yellow envelope, you're gonna have task number one your secret decoder, and three big white envelopes. So let's start off with the first card. It says, you've been given three envelopes. Each envelope has the name of a marine animal on it. To figure out which envelope to open first, read the clues below to infer which animal is being described. So the, the animal that's being described, this mammal lives in the ocean waters. It has teeth and breathes air through its blowhole on top of its head. It is known to be an intelligent animal and this animal uses echolocation to find its food. So our text evidence, we know that it is a mammal. So our text evidence, we know that it is a mammal and it breathes through a blowhole. That's our first puzzle piece. Now our second puzzle piece is our background knowledge. So looking at our three envelopes next, I have a dolphin, a clownfish, and a cuttlefish. I can use my background knowledge to know that a dolphin is the only marine animal that has a blowhole. So under background knowledge, I will write dolphins have a blowhole. So I can infer based on our text evidence and our background knowledge that the marine animal is a dolphin. So then we go to whoop, So then we go to our envelope that has the dolphin and we open it up. So I know that that is correct because I am on question number 2 now. Question number 2 says Super, you've been given a reading passage about the world's oceans. Read this passage and answer the following question on your paper. Using the information given in the text, using this information given in the text, where do you think the Southern Ocean and Arctic Ocean are each located on Earth? In the passage, there are letters underlined. Write them down and unscramble them to find out which envelope to open next. So we go to our passage, the world's oceans. It says, an ocean is a large area of salt water between continents. They cover about 70% of the earth. There are five oceans on earth, Pacific, Atlantic, Indian, Southern, and Arctic. The Pacific Ocean covers about one third of the earth's surface. Most of earth's volcanoes are located on the islands in the Pacific Ocean or near the coastline on continents surrounding the Pacific. Earthquakes frequently occur underwater in the Pacific, causing tsunamis. The Atlantic Ocean covers about one-fifth of the Earth's surface. The water is the saltiest of all the oceans. The Gulf Stream runs through the Atlantic Ocean and influences the climate, which makes the winters on the east coast of the United States warmer than inland. The Indian Ocean is mostly located in the Southern Hemisphere. It is the warmest ocean in the world. The Indian Ocean is used for trade among countries. 
The Southern Ocean surrounds Antarctica. The Southern Ocean I surrounds Antarctica. Icebergs float in the ocean, making it hard for the ships to pass through. Many animals live there despite the harsh weather, including penguins. The Arctic Ocean is mostly covered in the thick ice and snow. Animals such as polar bears and walruses live in the ice. The Arctic Ocean has the lowest amount of salt in its water. So I know that I'm talking about the Southern Ocean and the Arctic Ocean. Our text evidence states that the Southern Ocean surrounds Antarctica. And the Arctic Ocean is covered with snow and ice. So there's my text evidence. I know in my background knowledge that if something has snow and ice, it's most likely cold. So snow slash ice are cold. So I can infer that the Southern Ocean and the Arctic Ocean are located somewhere cold. So I use the text evidence and my background knowledge of snow and ice to infer that these oceans are located somewhere cold. So our task is to unscramble the underlined letters. I went ahead and wrote them down. And if I unscramble them, it spells out clownfish. So then I go to the clownfish folder envelope. I'm gonna make sure to put the papers back in the envelope so we don't lose them. And I'm going to my new envelope. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this one up. And we are now on question number three. So you have been given a secret decoder which is this fun little wheel right here. Hold on to it because you will need it again for future clues. To use the decoder, line up the inner letter A with the outer letter T. Look at the letters on the outer circle, then match them with the letters on the inner circle to decipher the code. So it says, line up the inner letter A, which is gonna be right here, and the outer letter T, which is right here. So we have to line these two up and we can decipher the code. So if I have the outer letter T, I know that that's an A. If I have the outer letter M, I know that the inner letter is a T and there's another M. And I take the outer letter T and line it up to have an A find the outer letter V to find a C and the outer letter D, which is right here, to find the inner letter K. So the word that I deciphered is attack. So if we're going back to our card, it says the code tells us what clownfish do to the divers that approach the anemones that they live with. Based on this information, what can you infer about a clownfish? So our text tells us that clownfish attack, or it says that clownfish do this to divers that approach the anemones. So clownfish attack me anemones. I'm just gonna put that for short. And for my background knowledge, I'm thinking back to Finding Nemo, and I know that the clownfish in that movie live in anemones. So if they live in anemones, we know that that's their house. So clownfish attack the divers that are messing with their houses. So I can infer that clownfish are protective because they are protecting their house if divers are trying to get to their anemones. Now that we have completed some examples together, you can work as a table group to complete the rest of the envelopes by yourself. Remember, you need to fill out every single puzzle 
on every single question. Think back to the text evidence, think back to your background knowledge and make your inference right there. But here's the catch. Once you've completed a big envelope, raise your hand and I will check to make sure you have all of your answers. After all answers are answered in your answer sheet and all parts of the puzzle piece are filled out on each question, then I will give you the go ahead for one person from your group to go shoot a basket with the basketball and try to score a point for your team. This is only going to be allowed if all members of your group are following expectations. You need to be at a voice level one and stay in your seats. All members should be contributing, whether it's taking turns writing down answers or one person writing down, another person reading and another person solving the puzzles. Either way, everyone must be talking and communicating with each other. But wait, there's more. As you can see, I have a giant light bulb on the board with your essential question. What is our essential question, you ask? Well, let me tell you. Our essential question today, how can we use inferences to understand something better? Ooh, that's a tricky one. After you complete an envelope and I check your answers, you have the opportunity to answer this question. While one of your table members is shooting the basketball, the other members of your group can write the answers on a sticky note and add it to our light bulb. You can explain how an inference helps you understand this topic better. How cool is that? We will get to talk about how inferencing is actually important to us. All right, friends, it's almost game time. Remember, everyone must contribute to the group if you want to score a point for your team. We are working in our group, so stay out of voice level one. Show your work by noting your text evidence and background knowledge in the puzzle pieces and put all papers back inside the envelope before opening another envelope so we can keep everything together. Okay, friends, here we go. Are you ready? Here we go.